video sponsored by Maple Movers. No minimum order, no subscriptions. Free shipping on every item, every day at MeepleMovers.com. Hello and welcome to Brian's Got Game. I'm Brian. Today I've got a game called Finger Guns at High Noon. Finger Guns is a 3 to 8 player party game by John Velgus and published by Indie Boards and Cards. In this game, it's every player for themselves in this hilarious game where each player simultaneously chooses a gesture, gesture and then reveals it at the count of three. Take out your opponents with a shot, a power shot, or even toss some dynamite, but be careful, everyone else might form a posse and turn on you. Heading to the saloon can cure what ails you, but only if you're the only one that made that gesture. Lastly, you can lasso up some allies to join your side and give you an advantage. There's no player elimination since you become a ghost when you lose all your health. Ghosts can block opponents from healing and can even win the game. So, check it out, and I'll show you who gets the sheriff's badge, how to heal at the saloon, and how to stick them up in finger guns at high noon. To set up, give each player a player mat. We're going to play a four-player game. And then, give each player a little marker. That's a lot of markers. To put on their card. And then everybody puts the health at 20. Let's get all set up real quick. And then you put the ally deck, uh, shuffle those, shuffle them, put them in the center, and then flip over the top one. Place the sheriff token in the center. You are now ready to begin. So this game is really easy. Um, you just have to understand what all the different um, actions are. So me and my dad are going to be showing you a four player game using our four hands. There. So um, we're all going to talk about what we're going to do. Um, but you don't have to. That's the thing. The, it's open discussion. You can say anything you want, and any anything you say you will do, you don't have to. So, non-binding. So you can try to convince people to be posses, to gang up on other people, all, all sorts of fun stuff. Then eventually, somebody who, either you're ganging up on them, or something's going on, um, or you guys are just sitting there, somebody has to say, three, two, one, draw. And then everybody points out their uh, what action they're gonna do. The person who said it gets the sheriff token, and basically what that means is that the next time they can't call out three, two, one, draw. So then it's just gonna be moved around, around, around. So, um, the different actions you can do is posse. So, this is a posse. Um, thumbs up. So, if this is a setup of what happened, you resolve them in order. So first is the posse. If half or more of the current survivors choose posse, so these guys did, he didn't, then uh, we guys stay here, and then he loses five health. So then we move down to south five. So he called that. So then, the next um, is shot. So target loses two health. So if you're shooting at him, he goes down two. So then the next time, let's go three, two, one, draw. So we resolve in order. First is posse, nobody did that. Second is saloon. So we are both holding up two fingers. So if you are holding up a two, three, or four, you're at the saloon. If you are the only one who holds up that number, we're both holding two, so we don't heal. Now, if he had held up a three and I held a two, we would have both healed that amount. So I would have healed two, he would have healed three. So that's it, we didn't get anything. And then shot, I shot him, so he goes down two more. And then, last one down in my power shot. So he's shooting at me and I lose six health. So I'm all the way down at 14. So the thing is, is that if you have a power shot, but you get shot first or hit by dynamite, then your power shot is canceled and doesn't do any. So uh, let's go again. He called it last time. Three, two, one, drop. All right, so these are the actions. So we're gonna start with posse, nobody did that. Saloon, he did. So he goes up four, so 13 up to 17. Uh, and then we've got shot, nobody did that. Lasso, so we are both lassoing. So if two people are lassoing, nothing happens. But if only one person is lassoing, so let's say he shot this guy instead. I was the only one who lassoed, then you get the card in the middle. If it has a keeper, then you keep it, and it gives you this action in the middle. So you may return this card to um, make your power shot not be canceled. So then you get to hit somebody. So that's a one-time only, but you get to keep it. Some other ones, this is an instant. Um, immediately, this happens. You and a survivor of your choice both gain four health. So um, they're all good things. Um, here's another one. You lose no health from the power shot or shot if you also do that same action. So some of these are pretty powerful. One of them is you get two health if somebody dies. All right, so that was lasso. Oh no, what happened? shot happens before lasso, sorry. 
So I would have gone down to then he would have gotten that, and then dynamite. So dynamite, each of your neighboring, each of your neighbors go down three. One, two, three. But I also lose one. So deals a lot of damage, three and three, but you also take one. All right, so you keep going, and eventually somebody's gonna die. So at this rate, I'm at the lowest, so I died. <laughs> so uh, then you have to flip it over, and now I'm a ghost. So when you're a ghost, uh, you return all of your allies to the bottom of the deck, and then you choose an action just like the others. But So you can do Saloon, two, three, or four, that you can't heal. When you choose the Saloon, you're just stopping the survivors from healing. You can shoot people, and they take damage like normal, and then you can also lasso. But if you lasso, you're just stopping people from getting the allies. Ghosts don't have allies. Um, so the survivor wins if at the end of a round, which is uh, after you resolve, if there are is in a four-player game, if there's one person left, they win. But if everybody dies at the same, every, all of the survivors, so if these guys are ghosts, and these guys both die at the same time, the current ghosts win. So if these guys both die, the ghosts win, because they orchestrated them to die. Um, in higher player games, uh, five, six, seven, eight, the game ends when there are two survivors, so then two people win. So that's basically how to play. You keep going around, shooting each other, going down health, turning into ghosts, getting allies, um, until either everybody dies, or you are the last man standing, or you and a partner are the last people standing. That's how to play Finger Guns at High Noon. Okay, got my dad here for a parent's opinion. So dad, what did you think of Finger Guns at High Noon? Finger Guns at High Noon was awesome. Um, I don't have a lot of friends, so it was hard to get a group to play. Yeah. Um, but I forced we, we, some people to yeah. play with me, um, and we had a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. It was, it was <laughs> a lot of fun. We played it with, we played it four-player game a couple times, and then we got five, six, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It was six. It was six. Okay. It was fun. Yeah, and it plays up to eight, um, which is awesome. Um, especially if you like party games and you have seven other friends. Um, I was kind of worried at first because I mm -hmm. thought, oh, you know, everybody's just going to gang up on me because I brought the game. Mm -hmm. um, but there were, you know, some actions that you can do to heal, yeah. um, which definitely helps. It was, it was cool. So components, um, you've got some cards, the little sliders, and then it's BYOF, bring your own fingers. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's not. I mean, there's not a lot to the game. It's just cards. Mm -hmm. um, I did like, you know, the the little counter. Mm -hmm. um, the plastic things do kind of fall off real easy. Um, so if your friends are rowdy, <laughs> uh, make sure you remember how much health you have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the artwork, it's got it in the box, and then the rule book, and then the cards. So it's cool with all the cards. And that's really kind of where the strategy comes in: is which cards to get and then when to use them. Yeah, and I thought that the ally cards, knowing what ones are out there and kind of which what they all do, um, the allies are very helpful. Yeah, like some of them are little, like you get four, you and a partner get four health, but some of them are like discard this to not cancel your power shot. Yeah, and I got the one that let me shoot two double people. shots. Yeah. yeah, that one was cool. But, I mean, they don't come out every time, mm -hmm. and if, you know, two people are going for, for yeah. the ally every time, you're basically giving up your turn, mm -hmm. so... You're right. I mean, that's where it's, the strategy is of, uh, out, you know, out guessing your opponents. Yeah. So that's kind of the strategy. And bluffing. There's lots of bluffing. If you, when you're talking about what you do. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the strategy is what you're going to say during the talking part, and then what to choose. So you got the normal gun, and then the power shot, and then um, which number to pick. If the you're dynamite heal. is awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Because <laughs> it does damage on both sides, but it also takes you down a little bit. It's like a not quite as good power shot but it's not cancelable yeah cancelable. yeah and then the, what cancelable. i found was interesting was the health right everybody's gonna go for four um you know so i went three for three most of the time yeah and nobody really goes for two but <laughs> if you're playing ooh, excuse me in a four or eight player game you know there's more people there's yeah. more people going for health so then you know you might want to just go for go the for, for sure two. two yeah but then if two people shoot you then <laughs> you're down two yeah so it's just a lot of fun. So we played it, and then we're like, let's play again. So it's really Yeah, this is a really good um, party game. If you're going to a, a game night where you have a lot of people that are coming, um, that are like social-type gaming, mm -hmm. um, this one is definitely one to bring along. And it says 20 minutes on the box, and that's pretty accurate. 
less if you've got less players. Yeah, and it also depends on your group. Yeah. Like, you could sit there and talk. For (laughs) four. Until somebody says, three, two, one, draw, right? Like, Uh, we spent a lot of time because nobody wanted to say it. (laughs) I don't know why. I always said it, but then every other time, I mean. (laughs) Yeah. Um, easier for kids we played it um, there weren't any younger kids there so they didn't end up playing but yeah but we played it with gamers and non-gamers yeah um, and it went it went over really well yeah it's pretty easy you just you, gotta, you have to understand what each thing is but you got your player aid right there in front yeah. of you so. so it's not that hard so a little bit of reading or you could just teach it to them yeah memorization so overall I thought it was really fun we played it played it again and then brought it over to the new group played it again just in the room next door I thought it was really good. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one, too. Next time we have a big group coming over, this one's coming out. We're playing Finger Guns. <laughs> so this was Finger Guns at High Noon uh, by Indie Boards and Cards. Thank you for watching Brian's Got Game. Please like us on our Facebook page. Send us a tweet at Brian's Got Game. Visit our webpage at Brian's Got Game.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Brian. This is my dad, and I'll see you next time.